Today, I'm sharing how this small laundry room closet is organized. The laundry room is located in a hallway that leads from the kitchen to the garage and recently received a makeover, which included a fresh coat of paint on the doors and trim, wallpaper, and new cabinets. The video for the laundry cabinet organization is linked in the description box below, along with all items mentioned in this video. All of the laundry related items are stored in those cabinets along with paper towels, tissues, first aid, and other miscellaneous items, leaving the closet in this space with no specific purpose. This closet now serves as the cat's closet, amongst other things, and houses the litter box, cat food, cat crate, and other larger cat items. Having this all behind a door prevents the dogs from eating the cat food and also helps maintain any odors from the litter box spreading throughout the house. First and foremost, a fresh coat of paint was applied to the closet walls and shelves to brighten up the space and the bottom floor level section received some peel and stick wallpaper treatment. I have been really into peel and stick wallpaper lately. It adds a nice pop of color and can easily be removed when you move on from that particular look. In this case, I chose a blue color for the cat's closet, so to speak. Shelf liners were also measured and cut for each of the four shelves to prevent any potential damage. If you have a Costco membership, they sell the contact brand in bulk. It's one of those items that you will always find a use for. The doorknob and hinges were also swapped out to match the other chrome finishes in this room. Last but not least, because this is the cat's closet, an adorable cat door was cut using a jigsaw to allow for the cat's entrance and egress. The very bottom section of this closet has the litter box and the cat's food and water. The litter box is set on a boot tray to collect any excess litter and to also make it easier to pull the box in and out of the closet when it needs cleaned. Everything that the cat needs is at his level and again out of sight of the dogs and the main living area of the home. The next shelf is used for towel storage. If you have dogs, you likely have a plethora of grungy old towels designated as dog towels, which are used for wiping their dirty paws off, drying them off when they come in from the rain or from swimming, or they are used to quickly wipe muddy paw prints off the floor. It doesn't matter how clean you are. If you have dogs, I'm sure you can commiserate. With that said, these dog towels are black to differentiate from the white household towels. They are also located in the laundry room, which makes it easy to throw them in the wash and put them right away after use. The beach and pool towels, which are not used as much, are also located on this shelf. Sunscreens and lotions are stored in an opaque bin in between the towels. There was also some hand sanitizer and pet odor spray that was thrown in there as well. If you are interested in rolling your towels like this, the 10 unique and beautiful ways to roll and fold towels video is linked in the description box below. The shelf above that is bottled water over stock. Most of the bottled water is stored in the fridge. However, space is limited. This divided acrylic container is perfect for keeping the bottles upright and orderly. I always prefer to remove water bottle labels. It's an extra step. However, if you're going for that aesthetically pleasing look when you open the door, this is a great way to help achieve that. Please note though that this is completely unnecessary. I did leave the labels on those hint waters since we'll likely want to know what flavor is in each bottle. There was a significant amount of open space left over on this shelf. So the paper towels, which were just organized and stored in the new laundry cabinets are going to be moved to the new shelf. This will work out better for a couple reasons. One being that these paper towels typically come in packs of 12, which meant that there was always overstock thrown in the bottom of the pantry because they didn't all fit in the laundry cabinet. And two, dish towels were beginning to be stored on that laundry shelf as well, which squeezed out even more of the paper towels. The next shelf is home to all of the larger cat items. The cat crate, which is the least used item on the shelf is tucked back in the corner. Next to that is a container of litter. Again, I like to remove the label. It takes two seconds. And next to the litter is this adorable mini trash can, which stores the cat food. I don't think this is sold by World Market anymore, but I'll see if I can link a few dupes. The last item on this shelf is this little clear container of cat accessories. Plastic grocery bags are also folded up and kept on this shelf for when it comes time to clean the litter box. 
The top shelf is where donatable and yard sale items are temporarily kept. These felt baskets are used to corral those items, which sidebar, I thought that Target had discontinued these since they were no longer showing up on their website. False alarm, they had just rebranded them from Project 62 to Bright Room. So in this case, there is an annual neighborhood yard sale and those yard sale items are kept in the attic until yard sale day. The attic is not convenient to access, so all smaller yard sale items that are found around the house throughout the year are stored in this basket and brought up to the attic all at once. Anything that is left over after the yard sale is then donated and not brought back into the house or attic. Items that are not used for the yard sale and donated right off the bat are kept in the donate bin once full, everything is boxed up and dropped off at the Goodwill, Salvation Army, or another similar business. Circling back to the grocery bags, those were moved down a couple shelves where there was more space and now they are a little closer to the letter box. Now that everything has a place in this closet, labels were added to polish everything off. Vinyl labels are always a really nice way to categorize items. They are the most amount of work. However, I think they look the best. I have been using an older silhouette portrait to cut labels and it still works great. White vinyl labels were adhered to clear acrylic bin clips which hook over the edge of the baskets. I've paired these bin clips with these kinds of baskets before and I love, love, love the look. However, the quality of the clip could be improved. No matter how many packs I purchase, the surface is always scratched. When purchasing these in store, I have gone through and inspected every single clip that they had in stock and every single one was scratched. So. If you can look past that and it doesn't bother you, I highly suggest this label combination. Moving to the next shelf, a gray vinyl label was added to the cat food and a white vinyl label was added to the cat accessory bin. I am extremely anal about making these even and level, which is why it always takes me quite a bit of time to apply them to the surface. Also, vinyl labels always adhere best when the surface has been cleaned with an alcohol wipe, which I did not do here and you can tell. Below that shelf, a white vinyl label was also added to the water overstock bin. It's pretty obvious to the naked eye what is stored in this clear container, however, adding a little label makes all the difference. Below that, a gray grocery bag label was added to that little container and the last label went on the opaque bin that has the sunscreen. I wasn't sure what to label this one, so we went with lotions and potions. There we have it, organization of a small laundry room slash cat closet. If you have a closet like this, I'd love to know what kind of things you keep stored in there and how you organize everything. 